go get him again. Welcome back to the Robezoi channel. I'm your host, Mark, and welcome to your subscriber's choice sampling samples Saturday. Love sampling on weekends, discover new things. Um, this is from the brand of Galet, and it's part of their Oud Trifecta collection that they released last year to add to their L'Art et la Matière line, which is growing like crazy. Remember when it was just like these little sweet things? There was like five or six in the collection and then they just kept adding. Uh, well, L'Art et la Matière, the line is huge. It's massive and it's, you know, the price just keeps going up and up from this brand um, or this line from Gatelet. Now, the one I wanted from this Oud Trifecta that they released was this cherry one. You know, this whole cherry thing. Um, it, it started off with Lost Cherry with me and I do want to delve into more cherry-based sets, especially the ones that lean a little more masculine that have a little more depth to them. I mean, this one seemed right up my alley, right? Just Cherry Oud as the name, perfect. Now, I wanted to sniff this one first. Um, I, I do hear that this is not the, the most challenging uh, release out of the three, so I kind of want to check them all out, but uh, I wanted to start with this one just because of the cherry. Now, uh, as far as Gatelet and as far as Gatelet as a brand and Oud in there, let's say their, their history with the note of Oud, um, really hit or miss, a uh, more miss than hit with the note, to be quite honest. And with sweet scents or sweet notes, cherry, um, they're definitely excellent with vanilla, tonka, all that. They're excellent. They have, their reputation is pretty much built on it. Um, they definitely can get that cherry out of a tonka bean note like I've never seen before. But what about as a standalone note in a fragrance, a standalone cherry? So my excitement for this particular sampling samples is actually quite high. Um, I really wanted to try this. I really hope that this is a big hit, but let's delve into it. Let's get into uh, stats for this one. Let's go under the hood for those stats. Release date was, of course, in 2022 last year. Concentration Eau de Parfum. Uh, nose is Delphine Jelk, and again, she's doing a lot more. When the years keep going, we're getting less Wasser and more Jelk, which is, it, it's gonna happen. It's bound to happen. Um, I do like her nose in regards to what she built in the past, and of course now uh, for the brand of Guerlain, I feel like she is on the path to being the in-house perfume for the brand. Um, now the big notes in this particular release, and this is where my cherry lovers, what can I say, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, you're not going to be a, <laughs> how can I say this gently? It's not a, it, it's not a primary notes in this release. It's a rose base scent. There's a lot of oud in it too, and then there's leather. So where's the cherry in the big three notes? Now there is cherry in this, you'll smell it. But personally for me, it's not a primary note. And we're gonna get into that once we sniff it. Let's get to that portion. So the lack of cherry, oh, oh, some people are going, oh, oh. Yeah, the lack of cherry in the top major notes may concern many of you, and it should. It never really popped in this scent, unfortunately for me, at least on my skin. I have my little uh, decant here, and I'm gonna actually end it. There's not much left to it, so I'm just gonna do this. Et voila, je pense que c'est fini. Oui, c'est fini. And launching it. There we go, there, there it goes, the other side of the room. Didn't break at least. Okay, so right off the bat, cherry oud. <laughs> Bring everything, just everything in the kitchen is, is it everything in the kitchen sink is at your nose. You look at the note breakdown, it's all there, like right now. Cherry Oud throws everything at you without any hesitation. You are going to smell every single note in this note breakdown at once. It's kind of busy. And what that means to me personally is that there's not gonna be much development in this release and there isn't any. So many cherry centric scents like to give the cherry its shine. In this release, uh-uh, not here, not now, not this release. It's not gonna happen now. The one thing I do like about this is that I always wanted uh, brands to make an oud-based scent with um, some fruits. Blackberry, blueberry, 
anything. Uh, I feel like fruits and oud work well together. And so that's one thing that I, I do like about this, but you're not going to get a lost cherry, right? Like the lost cherry gives you that three dimensional cherry, very authentic, lots of moving parts to make this cherry note really outstanding. You're not gonna get this portion in this release. This is more of a, a, a complex scent. You know, there's some scents that, you know, like when you say incense based scent, I'll use that as an example, and some certain fragrances give you incense and that's all they have surrounding parts but it really is just about the incense but then you have incense as a secondary note in a much more complex scent where there's some woods here and then there's there's some something else there and all that and this is where this goes into that category the complex scent category not the cherry centric uh category so what i get in the in the forefront here in the opening cherry and rose and they are attached to the hip um and, and i didn't have much testing in regards to that little thing that i just launched um they intertwine together and they really are hard to discern which one's which and eventually you won't even know that the cherry's gone but it's gone because the rose picks up where the cherry left off. Um, so they, they really are intertwined. And what I mean by the, the rose picks it off is because this is a jammy rose. There is a, a, a jammy quality to this rose that really intertwines with the cherry that they put into this particular fragrance. So those two are attached to the hip throughout the fragrance and it kind of extends that idea of cherry in this fragrance a really nice trick by Jelk. actually kudos to her really well done um now these two notes are met with the oud almost immediately like this thing goes dark right away so it doesn't give it a chance to be really a cherry centric fragrance oud comes in and it gives you that it's a westernized oud so the cherry flavor at this point takes a back seat the rose and the oud are the driver and the passenger seats. They're they're taking us on this ride and the cherries in the back seat of the ride. You get a little bit of cardamom here, a little touch of that as well. And there is also a leathery smoky thing that comes in and out of the scent. Honestly, that was the one note that I feel was the X factor in this release because I really liked leather, cherry, oud. It really worked well together. The leather itself was, uh, it had its moments and then it just fell off and then it came back um and that's where i wish i had a bigger decanter sample or a full bottle of this stuff because i feel like maybe if i can overdose on this stuff maybe there's gonna be more leather um yeah so you get much more leather if you bring your nose to your skin much less leather in the air from what i've through my testing the leather is excellent but i wish it had more oomph to it i wish it was more prominent um this is blended uh perfectly and almost too almost too polished if, if that makes sense like this is the kind of scent that i kind of do want some rough edges and lost cherry has some rough edges from tom ford um which makes it what it is um, i i really like and i miss those like the oud is too polished in this like wet westernized oud the leather it has some bite, but still a little suede, like a little, come on, give me a little more bite. And the cherry, same thing, much too polished um, and much too light as far as one of the notes that you probably buy this fragrance. Like a lot of people go in in, in a store and a Gatelaine boutique and they are looking at this cherry oud and cherries all the rage. So they really want that cherry and the juice is red from what I, I noticed. And there's a lot missing here. Now the oud itself isn't a statement oud. It just isn't that good. Now you're talking to oud connoisseurs here, ones that really do like their ouds. This is just a dry, woody, dusty thing, you know, that Galen utilized in the past before. I've seen it before in some of their fragrances. You can call this westernized and I'd be okay with that. Um, it is the backing of the scent. It is the, it's a major component of the scent. And at times you just picture this kind of oud wood, this piece of oud, and I think it is in their, you know, their uh, Gatelaine is like trying to sell this fragrance that there's a piece of oud wood and it's really dripping this cherry flavoring off of it. Perfect imagery, perfect. 
a lot less cherry than 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 oud though um and that's the one thing that i feel like it's a little you know the marketing of it is you know if it's dripping cherry i, I would assume it'd be a high secondary note it's it's a low secondary note to be quite honest the cherry kind of loses a lot of steam in this release now the cherry itself, let's get into the details of the cherry. The cherry itself is sadly not on a lost cherry level. It's not authentic. It's not three-dimensional to my nose. It reminds me more of Swedish Fish, the candy. If you remember those, those little red, those were one of my favorite candies, but it reminds me of that. And the rose itself reminds me of the Swedish berries. So, <laughs> So you put those two together and it's kind of like a, you almost can't discern which one's which and it starts getting muffled. Uh, they work well together, but the cherry does, doesn't really, it sticks around, but it really is a trick by, of course, the rose and the perfumier to actually extend the life of this. And it's not really this sweet of a fragrance. It's a very mellow, dark uh, fragrance because of the oud and the leather. But, um, it, it sticks it in the background of the scent and it stays around and after a while you start thinking wait a minute this is not cherry this is more like a raspberry strawberry thing and the rose is actually doing its thing here kind of tricking you into it so the rose is jammy but also shows some minor soapy qualities um and if you miss that soapy quality i wouldn't you know put it against you because there's so much darkness in this release but there is some soapy qualities from the rose that you can feel more into the mid and the in the back end of this release i know with cherry and rose combined many get heads especially the female uh, fragrance heads that do watch my videos you know all two of you would immediately think of la petite robe noire um, from the same brand because they do have, of course, rose and cherry in that particular release. So keep that in mind. It may remind you of La Petite Rub Noir. Now into the mid to the deeper dry down, the scent is so linear. It's, it's not even funny. This thing really doesn't show anything new here. You got everything at once right off the bat. So it's hard to really see any transitions. The oud, the leather and the rose are central here. Mostly rose and oud, more than anything. The leather pops in and out. It really, I wish I could just grab it, you know, at some point and go, stick around. <laughs> I like the rough edges you're giving, but uh, unfortunately it just goes back and forth. Uh, the rose still jammy here, so it prolongs the thought of a fruity cherry. It's not cherry. Um, and again, I don't want to call this 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 scent sweet. Um, when you're thinking immediately of fruity, you're thinking sweet. And there is some sweet nuances, but oh man, that dusty, woody, oud, westernized thing uh, with the leather. There's there's no real sweetness here. It's 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 bogged down and it really brings the darkness from immediate. Like it really doesn't even have a chance to be sweet. Like when that rose cherry thing starts right off the bat you're like oh okay there's some sweetness there that's where it goes once the oud shows up pff, done <laughs> done so overall if you're looking for a cherry like tom ford's lost cherry this isn't it the cherry in this never gets the full spotlight secondary player dare i say like a low secondary player and it keeps going downhill until it's non-existent in this release. Do I wish more cherry in this release? Of course I do. That's, you know, that's why I got the decant because I wanted to, this would have been a blind buy. You know, if, if, the, if the stars aligned and my wallet was there, I might have had a bottle of this. Now, not saying I won't get a bottle of this. It's actually a decent set but it's not a star, a showstopper. And I think I, I talked about this in some cherry, I'm doing a lot of cherry videos, but I'm still looking for that 10 out of 10. There's no way, no how anything's gonna beat this cherry. I haven't found that type of cherry yet. Lost cherry is the closest thing, at least to me. Um, so it's a well-built scent. The price range is kind of scary. So a lot of people are gonna be like, no, especially when looking at the name. They want a cherry from Guerlain, they're going to look at this and they'll go, I'm not going to get it here because I really want a big bold cherry. But it is a well-built scent. I have to give them that. Now let's get into Seasons, Day Night versus Celine Performance Seasons. Um, this is a fall and winter written all over, even the start of spring a little bit. You can extend it a little bit there. Um, nights, probably all seasons depending. I never felt that this fragrance was very... 
I want to be careful with my words, but it, it was it was dense, but I've, I've had darker, denser uh, fragrances, if that makes sense, uh, from, you know, oud or leather and stuff like that. Um, so to me, this is a lighter, I, wanna, I don't want to say transparent, but you can have more oomph. We'll say that. Day or night, I feel like both. Um, I feel like in the winter, like especially, again, I'm thinking Canada because I'm, I'm here. Um, when we get winter, we get winter. Uh, and I could wear this during the day or even at night, uh, fall at night, um, spring at night. Um, so more of a nighttime scent personally. I feel like the cool weather would really make this work well. Versatility, I'm going to go average. Um, I don't see the Oud's not barn, barnyard crazy. The cherry, again, very tame. The leather. It has a little bite, but really not that much. Um, so fairly average. Performance, good, very good. Um, that little sample gave me some performance magic. Performance longevity was 10 to 12 plus hours. And uh, you know, that this is to the people that performance is everything. Well, this is a good performer, at least on my skin. High projection, a really good, really good performance out of this release. I really like that. And a lot of people won't pay this type of price unless they get performance. You're gonna get performance here. So my final thoughts. This is one of those fragrances that, and, and you know me, honesty is the best policy. I will never sugarcoat a fragrance review for you. However, there was some disappointments and the cherry is right front and center. Is it a good cherry? It's a good cherry. Um, is it, um, will you be disappointed if you're looking for a central type of cherry? Yeah, you will be. Um, and, and you know, my final thoughts I've always like, to me, I always wanted, you know, a, a fruity scent with oud or leather as the backing. I feel like something a little more robust. And this was right there. It was, it's, here it is, right? Here you go. Get a telling me, here you go. You got what you wanted. You know, a cherry with an oud and, and leather. Um, I don't know. Ghislaine did well here, but it's not a home run. That's where I'm going with it. Very well balanced. Uh, Jelk did her thing here. Um, absolutely, I would say very, uh, almost too polished. And, and I understand Ghislaine is like this uh, from the fragrance community, right? This is, this is our our fragrance house. Don't, don't ruin it. Um, Sometimes being polished isn't good, and uh, they didn't get a home run here. The oud is good, but isn't excellent. The leather has some interesting parts, but it's too inconsistent for me. The cherry, too mild. I wish I could add the volume here. You know, I had that little decan, I'd be like, cherry, just tuck, tuck, just a little more volume. That's what I need to make sure I get more of it. Um, and the rose, honestly, I could do without. Um, the rose here is almost central in this release. I would say is it's an integral part of this this release. Um, it really is, you could say, the primary notes in this release. And honestly, I could do without the rose. And I know it's a trick to kind of prolong the cherry, uh, but oof, I could do without it. It was a good rose though, don't get me wrong. Um, and it's a very, like if you're looking at the oud rose, oversaturated oud rose um, genre, which I love. I love the genre. Uh, this is a different take. And that's one thing that I am gonna give it marks is that they put in a cherry note in, in, that, in that genre and it works. It works, but it wasn't a home run. So overall, a solid sniff. That was a good good Saturday subscriber choice. I enjoyed this. Um, and the brand of Gatelaine usually doesn't d disappoint that much. One I'd like to get, I'll be honest, I do want to get it, but it's not on that must get. Like there's other fragrances from the brand that I could think of top of my list that this hasn't kicked anything off the, the top three of the brand that I want to sniff or, or get or blind buy, um, but it's solid in there. Like if I get a bulk get a lane purchase, I might just throw this in and go, I want this one too. So if I had to give it a score, cause I always do sampling samples, hmm score um bottle worthy for me yes um and, and i think this does get not too much press this this fragrance and i understand why i see why uh, but i feel like it's a solid release so i'm gonna give this one an eight out of ten i feel like it has a lot of redeeming qualities you gotta look at the positives right in this rose oud game this is very different is it disappointing in the cherry genre depending on who who you ask um 
can I get a better chair? Yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, a solid release from the brand of Galileo, just not a home run. And now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. And I know this one's a pricey one, so not everybody has tested it, smelt it, and things like that. I understand that. So, hey, whatever you want to add in the comments below, absolutely. If you hate this fragrance, go ahead, bash it. Um, that's what the comment section is for. I will never delete or remove a comment because you don't agree with me. That's pointless. Um, yeah, oh, man. Oh, and, and yeah, definitely recommend the other two that were released with this. Uh, what's the other two? Oud Nude and Oud Call, I th believe. I think that's the one I want, that second one. Call, Cole, um, which I, I think is the more daring one. And you know me, when people say that, I'm like, okay, I want that one. <laughs> so, as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your cherry-based fragrance. Just because it says it on the sticker doesn't mean it's going to be primary. Choose them wisely. Thanks for watching. Have a good Saturday. Enjoy it.